This is Sienna, and you are listening to Talking Armageddon with BQ. Hi, this is Allie, and you're listening to Talking Armageddon with BQ. Hey there, everybody. This is the Impact Lounge, and this is BQ, whatever platform you are listening on right now. I really hope you consider becoming a subscriber. It's as simple as hitting the subscribe button. And this is the number one place to be for news, reviews, interviews, and more for the Positive Impact Wrestling fans. So this is the Talking Armageddon segment, and my guest is Alicia Atut, the newest backstage interviewer for Impact Wrestling. We talk Impact, we talk Ambi, and all that good stuff. In the description of this video, I'm going to put the link for her Ambi YouTube channel. Please subscribe conducts some really, really entertaining interviews with music artists, independent wrestlers, lots of impact wrestlers. You can probably find every single person from the roster damn near on her channel. If not, you will catch them very, very soon on Ambi. So that's it. Without further ado, hope you enjoy the interview with Alicia. Hey fans, this is Steve Wilson, the man behind the monster, Congo Kong, and you're listening to Talking Armageddon with BQ. All right, on the line I have Alicia, the newest member of the Impact Wrestling team. You may know her from her award-winning website, Ambi, her backstage work with Smash Wrestling, Greek Town Wrestling, Rise, or her work with Impact on their Twitch and One Night Only shows. That's right, Alicia, thanks for coming on. How's your day treating you so far? I know you got a lot of media to do today. Uh, first off, thank you so much for having me on the show. I was kind of telling you before we started this whole thing. I've been watching your stuff for a bit now, so I'm really excited to be on finally. And today's been wonderful. It's amazing just talking about Impact, my new role with the company, and all of the exciting things ahead. I got to ask you, you're pretty used to being on the other side of the interview spectrum. So how does it does it feel a little awkward being the one answering the questions instead of asking them? Let me tell you, it's so strange. I don't know if I'd say awkward, but you definitely have to be quick on your feet and you're not in charge of the conversation. So I'm getting used to it, but I enjoy it quite a bit. Yeah, you're you're a professional, so I'm sure you're uh, thank figuring you. it out. So, you know, um, I met Veda Scott over the Wrestle. Have you ever met her before? Yeah, I have. Okay, so I met her over the WrestleCon weekend at the uh, Rise podcast event. And I told her I've heard her do color commentary a couple of times, and I really commended her on the clarity in which she speaks and her ability to get her point across. And I asked her what her background was. She said she, in fact, had a background in communications. So interviews you do and that you conduct on Ambi to be very fluid and free-flowing, and also you're very well-spoken. So I'm going to ask you the same thing I asked her. Do you have an applicable background in acting or communications, or is this interview game something that just comes natural to you? This all just happened uh, quite randomly, honestly. I don't have any background in communication or acting or anything. Um, I went through high school, and I haven't done anything past that. I graduated high school and went right into Ambi. Uh, so I've been doing this since I was a teenager. So, yeah, no, no background. All right, so let's talk Ambi then. Um, so while the wrestling fans know it as a website and a channel featuring interviews with their favorite wrestlers and musical artists, I'm more fascinated by and impressed with the fact that you've built your own brand from the ground up and right now you're just 23 is that is that right yeah that's correct okay so 23 years old you've built your own brand from the ground up talk to me about the idea and the vision behind ambi and how it's grown to be what it is today i don't know if you you know expected it to be what it's become or if it started off as a hobby or what but i, I would love to know the story behind it of course. Well, thanks so much for the compliments, first of all, but it pretty much did start out as a hobby. I started posting things online randomly because I used to write a lot in school, and then my parents said, why don't you throw this up on a blog and just see what happens? Put it out into the world. And it is one of the scariest things I've ever done, but also one of the best things I have ever done in my life because it really changed everything for me. So luckily I started getting views, and those views turned into more views with the bigger the acts ended up getting. And then it got to the point where things were so big on the music front, and my site got fairly popular I thought why don't I try a wrestling interview so I did one and then that turned into a dozen and now I've done hundreds of them over the last year and a half I've been in the wrestling business for about a year and a half now so yeah it's very exciting for me to see all of the different things coming my way and the fact that it's all DIY it's all me behind everything uh, I think that's the most gratifying part especially now landing this incredible gig with impact it's extremely surreal talking about your first interview then so you started with music you said Yes. Okay, so so who did you interview first? Like was it did you start with just like real local, you know, bands trying to get heard or did you kind of swing for the fences off the bat? Yes, yeah, so my first ever interview was actually one that wasn't set up. Usually you go through the proper channels, you set things up through a publicist, you do everything like that. Uh but my first one was this band that I 
kind of new and I approached them at a music show that they were performing at and I went up to them they're called Bombay Bicycle Club a fairly big band in the UK one of my favorite bands and I went up to him and said hey do you mind if I ask you a question or two and I asked him a 2Q video interview is what I used to call them it's just two quick questions and I'm out of there and I was a nervous wreck so that was my first ever interview I was I think 17 years old and it freaked me out but it was the best decision I ever made it really changed everything do you get a? Uh, do you get nervous now? I mean, I know that I do. With everyone I have come on the show, even if it's the Impact Stars, like I usually have some kind of relationship with them beforehand that I build for a mm-hmm. month or two, so I don't get too nervous. But but I still have some nerves every time I conduct these. Um, what about yourself? Because you you seem pretty confident when you do what you do. Oh, thank you. It's more so this crazy anxiety I have, like excitement. I always want my interviews to be super fun and kind of very conversational. So I don't know if it's as much as as they are nerves, as it's just like excitement to kind of get in there and do it. So I think it's almost channeling those nerves into excitement so they don't get to you. I feel like that's super important when you're interviewing. <laughs> so what about, uh, we talked about the music. What, who did you start with with wrestling when it came to the interviews? My first ever interview was with Impact Knockout Alley, actually. Oh, wow. And since then, I've done three interviews with her over the last year and a half and have formed a really lovely re- uh, friendship with her. And so uh, that was kind of my my first introduction to interviewing wrestlers and since then I've interviewed almost the whole Impact roster. I'm so close to all of it and definitely on July 22nd I'm going to be knocking out a lot of interviews along with the two days of tapings happening afterwards on the 23rd and 24th in Toronto. So yeah, a lot's going to be happening Slammiversary weekend as far as Ambi interviews go. So I'm super excited about those. That's cool because I, I did notice that that you're you're trying to get make sure you get all of them. And I, I've had uh, Ali on the show and she's she's amazing and um, had a lot of fun having her on. Um, how does the preparation go for your interviews that you do? So I've never been the type to like hop on Wikipedia and you know read the common stuff and be like, so who trained you to start wrestling? You know, yes. I, I, I try to come <laughs> from a different angle. So um, do you do much research? ahead of time or do you, you just go head in? Yeah, I always try to do my research because I don't want to go into an interview and have it feel like to the wrestler or the musician on the other side, oh, this girl just read my Wikipedia page. That is my biggest fear. I want to make the interviews different, unique, and make sure that they come out of it happy and that everyone with the company surrounding them is happy. So I've done interviews where I've done hours of research, and I've done interviews where I've done days of research. Sometimes it's kind of funny. I I say I'm a professional stalker because, let's be honest, that's what us interviewers do when you really want to make things different and learn everything about the person you're talking to. So research is a really big thing for me. Yeah, because I know you write, sometimes you have your questions down on cards, but it seems like you go off the cuff quite a bit. Yeah, it's just because my memory sometimes, I'm, sometimes when I go to these shows, especially impact shows, sometimes I'm doing up to 10 interviews a day. So it's not that you're going to mix things up between people, but it's literally just in case you're there and you're sitting there and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm blanking for a moment. Let me just take a little look down and we'll keep flowing. But luckily that never really happens. It's just there just in case. So we're going to talk impact here in a little bit, but... Um... Just just on that same topic, you said you've spoken to most of the stars. Do you have a particular one that you felt just was the best interview that it, it just flowed well? It was, you know, but we all have different chemistries with different, you know, type of people and everything. So is there one that you think just, man, like, I, I, this was great. I really enjoyed it. Could have talked to this person all day. Oh, absolutely. There are there are a couple, but one of my favorite people to speak with ever is Grado. I love that man. Every time he's on, we just laugh for sometimes up to like 25 minutes for an interview, which is fairly long for sit down video interviews. I've had him on three times as far and then which I think as far as people I've had on a few times too. Eli Drake. We've done three rounds together. One yeah. lasted half an hour because we can just sit and talk for forever. And he's so he's so fun to speak with. And uh, you, you've everyone's seen him on TV. He is just incredible on the mic. So you can only imagine what a conversation with him is like. So uh, those are two that I I love having back on. But I have not had one bad interview with anyone from Impact. Everyone's just so personable and amazing to be around. Good, good. Uh, what do you think of Grado's new song? Because uh, Impact just uploaded it yesterday to their YouTube channel, and I haven't been able to stop listening to it. I love it. When we were at the recent tapings in Windsor, which everyone's going to be able to see soon. Actually, the first one's going to be my debut this Thursday. Uh, But when we were in Windsor, he's like, Alicia, you're going to love my new song. And I can't do an accent for all for the life of me. But his new song is so good. I can't stop listening to it. I was like, great. Oh, you're right. It's amazing. I love it. And it's danceable. That's what you need with him. You need it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it is. It's it's uh it's really cool. Um, the last thing I want to ask before we kind of get into impact, um, you know, we can see that wrestling and music that really runs through your veins, and it's quite, 
and it's something I see on social media all the time. People say it's very obvious that you have a legitimate love and passion for what you do. And as much as I, I love talking about Impact Wrestling and it's a huge part of my life, entertainment-wise, my passion is to watch basketball, to watch the NBA. And I also have a guilty pleasure of watching The Bachelor and The Bachelorette on Mondays because I have to, I have to, dis <laughs> I have to, dis they have that in Canada, right? Like a Canadian version? Yes, yeah. Okay, so, because <laughs> I need to disconnect from wrestling sometimes. Like that's, I, I just have to or I'll go crazy. So all that being said, I'd love to ask my guests this question. What is your release or your hobby, whatever you want to call it, outside of Ambi, outside of, you know, the wrestling world and everything, or do you even have one? It's very hard to fit time in with all of the stuff that I'm doing, balancing the two worlds of music and wrestling. But when there is that downtime, I love hanging out with my sister who's two years younger than I am, sitting on the couch watching some crappy Netflix horror film, or I'm a massive Curb Your Enthusiasm and Seinfeld fan. So anything Larry David touches, I can binge watch for hours. So that, those are usually my go-to shows. Uh, Sienna is also really big at those cheesy uh, horror films. Yes, a yeah. lot of a lot of impact talent is surprisingly like <laughs> Ali loves but like she's she's crazy for them. She's seen all of them, but yeah, a lot of people are, especially the um, Dave Christ loves them, Callahan. So wow, wow, didn't know that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I want to get into Impact Wrestling here. I know I know a lot of people really want to know about uh, you know how this all came about. So for the fans of Impact who are not familiar with the ambi brand they were first introduced to you i believe on last chancery on twitch i think that was the last i mean the first one you did uh with them yes. and then most recently the zero fear one i'd only show and i gotta tell you after the twitch show i think more people online were talking about you than they were the show itself <laughs> there was a it was just a lot of really really positive feedback um and the, the chat room and twitch just loved what you were doing my favorite i think was uh, when you sat backstage with Matt Seidel, and you like sat on the ground with him. Yeah, that that was a fun one. He, him and his third eye, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that one, that one cracked me up. But um, talk to me about how you, how joining the team happened in a an official capacity. Obviously, you're you know kind of working with them there, but now it's you know become official. So how did this all come about? I know people really want to know. Yeah, absolutely. So I was doing a lot of backstage work for local promotions, and then I started doing things for BCW in Windsor, which is actually the company founded by Impact's very own Scott Demore. So I started hosting backstage promos and interviewing at their shows, which were co-pros. Uh, and then from there, Scott and I were talking quite a bit, and it got to the point where um, we started discussing Impact and actually coming on board. He's like, hey, would you like to work said shows I said absolutely and then it kind of just blossomed from there really just a simple conversation to uh me now being on tv with them every Thursday night so I imagine you'll be doing Slammiversary that I will yeah it's such oh. an incredible it's gonna be such an incredible show it's the July 22nd at Rebel in Toronto biggest pay-per-view event of the year I'm thrilled about it and then the following two days we actually have tapings as well which I'm working which will be July 23rd and 24th at the same venue in Toronto Lovely, lovely. Um, I, I got to ask this. We, we we need some clarification on this. Are you doing just the Anytime Impact tapes in Canada or are you doing anything in the United States too? We really haven't finalized anything as far as that goes yet. So I'm kind of a, on the same board as you guys right now. <laughs> We're just waiting to finalize things. So so what are, you, what are your thoughts on the current impact product and you know everything from the build to slam reversary and all that because you know you seem like you watch everything um <laughs> i do <laughs> i mean some obscure <laughs> you'll be tweeting out some obscure uh wrestling promotions i'm like gosh you know but it seems like you really truly do watch everything so what what are your you know genuine thoughts on impact the direction they're going and i mean you're obviously very excited to be involved with them so i imagine you have very positive things to say but what have uh, what have your your thoughts as as a fan I absolutely love it. I feel like I couldn't have joined at a better time because the roster is so strong right now, whether it's the singles division, the tag team division, or the knockouts division. We have so much new talent that's just incredible to watch. Like, look at the Tessa Blanchards and the Kiara Hogan's. Like, they're absolutely captivating. And the road to Slammiversary right now, I mean, it's it's massive. We have Johnny Impact making his return finally, and he's someone that I've wanted to have on my show as well. So, yeah, it's going to be incredible finally seeing him there. And I just feel like there's so much going on that's so positive in the company. So I really have nothing negative to say. It's just I'm so excited to be a part of it. All right, so who are some of the talents that you'll be interviewing 
over Slammiversary and that set of tapings. You said he pretty much got everybody. So who you mentioned Johnny Impact? Who else? Uh, who else you need to get on board still? Yeah, I would love to do one with Johnny and Taya together. I've spoken with Taya before, but not done anything with them together or at an actual Impact show. So I think that'd be so much fun. Uh, now that. Eddie Edwards is kind of losing it a little bit. I think it would be very interesting to sit down with him because when I had Eddie on my show before, it was a very happy Eddie Edwards. So that would be <laughs> that would be a little bit different. Um, I'm trying to think of, of who else because I've interviewed so many now. It's uh, It'll be a lot of repeats. I just did one with Rich Swan at the Windsor taping, so that'll be up soon. So oh, cool, people cool. will get a really interesting look at, at Rich and everything he's been up to as of late um and yeah i'd love to catch up with sammy there too because obviously between him and eddie right now things are pretty crazy and now him and pentagon jr who knows where that's going so yeah that'd be really neat to have on do you got any advice for me on how to interview rosemary i actually have a uh, demon bunny interview coming later this year and i'm not (laughs) i'm still not sure how to approach it yet i know you've had rosemary on and i think it was a smash tv interview where she was just like uh, hovering over you yeah I've had her on a couple of times. Just be careful. You don't want to, what's the term? You don't want to poke the bear. You know, don't don't get her too aggressive. Don't ask her anything that might might tick her off a little bit. Just try to keep things, you know, flowing pretty well. And don't insult the hive. Do not insult the hive. <laughs> she doesn't like that. Uh, with Allie there, though, it should be fairly easy. I think she'll just keep things a little bubbly. So that's a good combo to have. You should be safe. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, uh, there was an independent show I went to down here in Tennessee several months ago and and Rosemary was there and uh, I stepped behind her table to take a picture with her and I accidentally kicked her merchandise box one of them and like knocked it over like I had some stuff on it knocked it over and she just got in my face oh wow and I've never been so intimidated by a by a female in my life (laughs) yeah she's scary luckily I mean, I made it out of the first interview with my life. Round two, she smiled around me a bit more. So I think once you get on her good side and you see her a little bit more, she might become not friendly, but a little better with you. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I, I got to ask, is there going to be any crossover with Ambi and Impact? Like, basically what I mean, will we will we see, you know, a version of it with the Global Wrestling Network? Or, or are you just going to continue to do your thing and then when Impact you know, calls you, you do, you know, do what you do with them? Or is there, are we going to see any kind of crossover at all? I would absolutely love that. There's been no discussion of it as of yet, but uh, if you've seen me and the way I work, I never close my mind to anything. So that's definitely something I would love to discuss with them if uh, the opportunity arises. You know, it seems like Impact is so much more well-received in, in Canada than many, any, many areas here in, in the United States, unfortunately. And for those of us who are really hardcore fans, it's it's, it's kind of hard. You know, we love the product and we see some of the negative feedback. And it seems like in Canada, you know, they can go there and be themselves and they're not holding the past again, against them. What is, what is it that makes the fans in Canada such a special group of wrestling supporters? And I don't know. There's something in the water. Like us Canucks, anytime if it's a wrestling show, hockey, oh my gosh, don't even get us started on hockey, or if it's a concert. I feel like everyone just goes there with the intent for such a good time that there isn't any negativity from the get-go. So when you're there, these tapings in Windsor that we did, which are going to be starting to air this Thursday, it's just crazy. The atmosphere in that room is like some of the most energetic fans I've ever been around. So I don't know if there's an actual answer to why we're pretty (laughs) great up here, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to take the compliment because being a Canuck myself. So I'm glad to hear that. uh, There's something in the water up here. (laughs) And I I think, I think impact, is doing the next three tapings in Canada. Is that right? Or do you not know? I thought they released the dates. So it's going to be Slammiversary on the 22nd at Rebel in Toronto. And then there's two TV tapings the two following days on July 23rd and 24th. Okay, wonderful. And and past that, you're not really sure? I might know a thing or two, okay. but I can... <laughs> okay. <laughs> that I cannot say as of yet. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um mm-hmm. We're going to get into some rapid fire questions here real quick. I, I just got a few from Twitter because a couple of them are very similar to each other. So uh, sure. just, just going to ask you some real quick ones. Uh, wrestling Covers has a couple here, but he wants to know, uh, this is a really standard wrestling fan question, but it's all good. Um, what's your dream interview for a band? Ooh, Kiss. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about for a wrestler? Um, That's between the Hardys and... 
I mean, I've been I've been a Johnny Impact fan, like all the Johnnies. I've been a fan for years, so that's going to happen. But he is he is one of my dream interviews for sure. Okay, wonderful. The Hardys would probably be pretty difficult to pull off at this point, right? As long as they're contracted to WWE. Yeah, but you never know what can happen. I when I first started this site, I never thought that I'd interview half of the stars that I did. So I'm, you know, I always think big. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, MJ Hicks asks, any chance you ever get in the ring and take a few bumps? Um, that is a really good question because I'm a baby and I bruise like a peach, so probably <laughs> not. I'm, I'm willing to to do a couple things if I need to for segments or promos, but uh, nothing too serious. I don't think you're going to see an Alicia to debut in the ring anytime soon. Okay. Um, World of Polygro ones, I know. If you could recommend any current band, who would it be? Ooh, there's this band called The Wombats, and they're from the UK, and they just play incredible indie rock music. So I'd say definitely check out The Wombats. They are phenomenal. They're actually touring with Weezer this summer, who's another great band. So, yeah, check them out. Does Weezer still make music? Or oh, Or they yeah. just tour? No, making music, touring, the whole shebang. Oh, wow. I, I yeah. had no, no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a question from myself. TNA's final deletion or WWE's ultimate deletion? Or whatever the hell they called it. I have to go with TNAs. I thought it was so entertaining. I did too. I don't even know if that's what it was called. Was it called Ultimate Deletion? (laughs) I wrote that down here and I'm like, I don't know if that's right. Honestly, don't remember the exact title, but I just remember being so entertained. And I feel too, because it was the start of it. The second one almost felt like, like a, like, um, I don't know, like a half thought one of the first one. Because the first one was actually super original. So when they redid it, it just didn't have that like same surprise that the first one had so right yeah i definitely have to go with the tna one okay definitely all right well that'll do it um thank you thank you for your time alicia i had a a blast talking to you oh thank you so much for the interest i I seriously appreciate the coverage and i'll share this everywhere as well oh that sounds good to me i'm not going to turn that opportunity down so (laughs) yeah no just make sure to take me and stuff and uh, whether it's like a video or quotes or whatever I'll, i'll retweet Okay, lovely. Sounds good to me. And uh, thanks to all the listeners. Don't forget that Impact Lounge is the number one place to be for news, reviews, interviews, and more for the Positive Impact Wrestling fan. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And talk to you guys soon. Peace.